Think back to the scariest thing you've ever done. Maybe it was giving your first speech, or maybe it was leaving the country on your own. For me, it was learning how to do a backflip at the age of 32. <laughs> the act of doing a backflip isn't all that scary, but you should know that we adults are biologically wired to reject the notion of learning such a skill. It's built into our survival mechanism not to be upside down in the air. Studies show that our prefrontal cortex reaches full maturity by the age of 25, after which all of our decisions are based off of two things: risk and reward. As you can imagine, learning a backflip feels rather high in one category and low in the other. So, what was I doing learning a skill that's no longer practical in adult life? I needed to give up some control. There's a brief moment after leaving the ground when your mind shuts off and your instincts take over. That's the moment I've tried avoiding my whole life. As far back as I can remember, I've always needed to be in control. Before I could do anything, I had to know everything. What's there to gain? What's the risk? And have I looked at every possibility? My control found its companion in the game of pool. Plan ahead. Be precise, and never show any emotion. <laughs> it was the perfect fit. Pool became my passion, and I always made time for it, even if it meant putting my friends and social life second. My discipline gave me purpose and led to success. For the first time in my life, I was pretty damn good at something, and with skills came recognition. Soon, I became obsessed with the idea of self-improvement, and I tried to control everything to align with this goal. Friends want to hang out? Can't. Got to train. Party late on a Friday? Nope. Early practice tomorrow. Success, it seems, comes with a heavy price of loneliness. Eventually, I stopped playing pool, but I took the framework of control I had built and applied it to other hobbies. On the physical side, I was really into breakdancing, and I figured, just like with pool, the best way to get better was to add structure to my discipline. A typical practice: warm-ups, stretches, footwork drill A, ten sets. Check. <laughs> I try to make everything perfect, favoring precision over expression. It never occurred to me I was missing the essence of the dance. Soon enough, my hobby started becoming less and less fun. And more and more maintenance, and as age and adulthood caught up with me, I stopped altogether. In the absence of dance, I felt restless. My body craved movement, yet my mind would argue against starting again. What's the point? You're too old. You're not competing anymore, and you're tired of the same routine over and over. I actually needed a reason to move. As author Gregory Roberts once wrote. Luck is what happens to us when fate gets tired of waiting. Luck. I see that my friend posted a video on Facebook. I click on it. Fate. A man was talking about movement. His name is Ido Portal. His message: Move, because we can. What are we training for? He says. It never arrives. We're always preparing and training. We want to do it. A light bulb came on. Was this man talking to me? Self-improvement is my mantra, yet I've been preparing for moments that never seem to come. What was I training for? As the video played on, I watched as this man gracefully went from being on his feet to being on his hands to being on nothing at all. His motion inspired me. His words gave me my reason. I was going to move for the sake of movement. I wanted to experience movement in its fullest, and to do that, I needed to confront one of my biggest fears: flipping, height, gravity, inversion. It was the great unknown. 
The years of breakdancing had kept me so grounded that the concept of moving in the air was completely foreign. Learning my first backflip went a bit like this. Okay, so you want me to jump straight up, look forward, and tuck my knees in? I thought the whole point was to go backwards. <laughs> How am I supposed to see behind me if I'm looking forward? Dude, I want to break my face. <laughs> Physically, I knew I was capable, but I couldn't bridge that mental gap of uncertainty. This is the one move where you can't see where you're going until you've gotten there. How can I jump into something blind like that? My friends tried their best to be helpful. You got to just go for it, man. <laughs> Stop thinking so much. And my all-time favorite, Scion. Don't grow an apple, grow a pear. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm the educated adult in the room. I went to college, I got degrees, and I work in corporate, yo. I'm over here mitigating the risks to my wellness portfolio. I got investments in AAA-rated safety devices like this mat and this trampoline. I know what I'm doing. Okay. So they had a point. I could keep playing it safe, or I can admit my control had become my crutch. It was time to take that leap of faith. Do you remember that whole high-risk, low-reward dilemma of the backflip? Now I'm finally seeing it's the other way around. While I thought I had control, it was control that had me, dictating my life and my potential. When I finally let it go, I realized that the moment I'd been preparing for was the present moment. I'm here right now, no longer attached to ideas, living for the experience. Thank you.